Now, a social network is very simple. It consists of just two kinds of objects. One is usually drawn as a circle and is a node. The other is a line and is called a tie. A node is supposed to represent something that can communicate with another node. And a tie represents the communication. At base, that's all there is to a social network. What could be simpler? Well, it turns out there are a few complications, but those only come from the pattern of relationships, the pattern of communications that occurs in the social structure shown by a network. In this network, we'll label our nodes with letters. And one of the things that we can calculate is called degree. Now degree is defined simply as the number of ties associated with a node. So for A, you literally just count the ties that touch A, and that's three. For B, you notice there's just one tie touching B, so that's the degree of B, one. For C, that's two, and we could calculate for D a degree of three. E finally has a degree of 1, in case you're curious. Let's go back to our nodes and our ties. There are two kinds of ties that we can imagine. One kind of tie uh, involves no direction, but if we include an arrowhead showing direction, we have a directed tie. And that's because some kinds of communication just go one way. For instance, from A to B, we could say that A shoots spitwads at B, but B doesn't have to shoot spitwads back at A. A can infect B if we're talking about a disease network. A can also love B. But B might not love A back. This is the classic story of uh, a romance novel. And you can remember the idea of the directed tie through the visual reminder of Cupid's arrow shot through Valentine's heart. The cruelest of holidays for those uh, who are not involved in a reciprocal two-way directed relationship. We can think about the difference between undirected ties and directed ties when we draw networks. Because every network should consist of just one kind of tie, and that means that networks either have direction or not. Now we can see sometimes on the left there are no arrows drawn anywhere. Uh, this is for some kind of social relationship between uh, two people that doesn't have any direction, like playing tennis together or going to lunch together. Both ha people have to be involved. On the other hand, uh, that is an undirected network. A directed network, on the other hand, involves ties between people that don't have to be reciprocated. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. This can involve love. It can involve liking, sending mail, infecting with viruses. And when we have a directed network, we have a different way of thinking about degree. It's no longer simply counting the number of ties that are associated with individuals, but how many ties go in, in degree, how many ties go out, out degree. For in degree, we would count the number of ties going in. For out degree, we would count the number of ties going out. So for A, out degree is 2, but in degree is 0 because there are no ties pointing into A from other nodes. For B, there are no uh, ties heading out from A, but there is one heading in. So we have an in degree of 1, out degree of 0. For C, there is one tie going in to C and one tie heading out from C. For D, we can see two ties going in and one tie headed out. So for a directed network, you measure 
in degree and out degree. For an undirected network, you simply measure degree because there is no direction. Another property of a social network and social network structure is distance. And distance is defined as the number of intervening ties, the number of ties that lie between two nodes in a network. And those networks lie along a path, and not just any path, but the shortest possible path between those two nodes. So let's look at an example in two networks. The first network will be an undirected network, a network without direction in its ties. In that network, we can go either direction from A to B, back from B to A, and we can look at a very simple network of five nodes. And if we want to consider what the distance is between A and B, the answer is the number of intervening ties, the number of ties that lie between them in the shortest possible path. You can imagine yourself actually walking from A to B, and that is a distance of one because there's one intervening tie. If we want to think about the distance between nodes A and C, on the other hand, we have to walk first from A to B and then B to C. That's two ties a distance of two. The distance from A to E is not quite as obvious because we could go from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to E, which would be four, but that wouldn't be the shortest path. The shortest path is three. Three intervening ties, A to B, B to C, and C to E. Now, we could think of another network, this time with direction in its ties and therefore a directed network. And in such a network, we might imagine that sometimes ties are reciprocated, sometimes they aren't. But in thinking about distance, what's important is that you have to follow the direction of the arrows. They're like one-way signs on streets. Sometimes you can go both ways, sometimes you can't. So if we think about the distance between A and E, these two nodes here, we cannot simply go from A to B, B to C, and C to E, because that would be violating the fact that there's only one way to get between C and E, and that's from E to C. So the shortest path is A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E to C, which is a distance of five. Yet another structural property of a network is a cut point. Now, a cut point is a node, and it's a node that, if you take it out of the network, if you just erase it from the network, divides one network in which you can get from any one node to the other into two networks that are separated from one another entirely. That is, in which there's no way to get from some nodes to some other nodes. So, in this network, can you see the cut points? Not A, because if you, you take out A, all the other nodes are still connected. Not E, not G. C, D, and F are the nodes that, if you take them out, divide one network into two. Yet another property of a social network structure is density, which is a fraction, the number of actual ties divided by the number of possible ties. Now, the number of actual ties can only be as large as the number of possible ties. And so, as a maximum, the value of that fraction is 1, because any number divided by itself equals 1. The number of actual ties could be 0, and if the number 0 is divided by any number, it equals 0. Therefore, density varies between 0 and 1, multiply that by 100, and you get the percent full of a network. How full a network is of ties.
Let's take a look at an example with an undirected network. And let's take a look at a very simple one with just three nodes. We know in the top we put two for the number of actual ties because we simply count them. And in the bottom, we know that there's one more that could be there. Therefore, two out of three, 0.66 or 66% full. Three possible ties, two actual ties, 66% full. What could be simpler? Well, let's make it a little bit more complicated by adding one more node. Now there are four nodes. There are how many ties? Three ties. How many possible ties? Can you see them? Let's look. One between A and C, that's not there. One between C and D, that's not there. And one between D and A. Three possible ties that aren't there, plus three possible ties that are. Altogether, six possible ties. Three divided by six equals one half, which equals 0.5, or 50% full. Now that's not too hard when you have a small network, but what if you have a network with more nodes in it and more ties? Let's draw one. You'll see it's starting to get complicated. How many actual ties do we have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, how many possible ties are there? Oh dear. That creates a problem. It's going to be very easy to miss some if we just worry about eyeballing it. So we need something better than that to give us the number of possible ties. Fortunately, there's a simple formula for it, and all a formula is is a series of steps to give you the answer. The number of possible ties uh, varies in an undirected and in a directed network. Let's take a look at an undirected network first. In an undirected network, the number of possible ties equals n times n minus 1 divided by 2, where n equals the number of nodes. So if n equals the number of nodes, n times n minus 1 is the number of nodes times the number of nodes minus 1. How many nodes are there? 6 in this example. So we would multiply 6 times 6 minus 1, which is 5, and then we divide that all by 2. That equals 30 divided by 2, or 15. So now we have an answer. The number of possible ties is 15. But remember, density is the number of actual ties, 7, divided by the number of possible ties, 15. Don't forget that last step. So density is 7 divided by 15 in this case. So let's take this network, this undirected network, and let's turn it into a directed network, a network with direction to the ties. Because it turns out that the formula for the number of possible ties is just slightly different in a directed network. Now I'm going to add arrows, and sometimes I'll make a double arrowhead, and it's important to know that when there's a double arrowhead, that's just a way of saying there are two ties, one going one direction and one going the other way. So you count both. Now, in a directed network, the number of possible ties equals n times n minus 1 divided by nothing. How many nodes are there? still 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5, so 6 times 5, equals 30. There are 30 possible ties. 
Now we just need to figure out how many actual ties there are. Let's count them. Hmm. Make sure to count the double-headed arrows twice, because that's actually two ties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine actual ties, 30 possible ties, and so our fraction for density is going to be 9 divided by 30th, 9 divided by 30, which simplifies to 3 divided by 10, or 30% full.